I enjoy doing the God sheep sermon, sermonettes, or whatever you want to call them, because it's a way of demonstrating a lot of the truths about God and what He can mean and do in our lives day in and day out. I had uh, rolled up a ball of twine because, you know, it's coming close to, to fishing time. And I had rolled up a ball of string like that you have on a fishing line. Have you ever been fishing? And you fish for a while and that line gets all tangled up. Well, that's a hard thing to get untangled. And so in the little kid's message at a church, I had this fishing pole and I had this line all tangled up and I asked the kid to think it untangle that. <laughs> they'd have never got that untangled if they'd have worked forever. And that's the idea. Sometimes our lives get all tangled up with life, you know, that we don't know which way to go. And so God can show us a way to do that. And it's simple. You just cut the line off, throw the tangled stuff away, and start new. That's the fastest, easier way about it. So it's like God getting rid of the sin out of our life, and we start all over anew with Him. And I thought that was a good illustration of how God could do it. And it impressed me not only that way, but we were taking drivers training at school. And uh, the instructor was telling uh, instructing how to parallel park. You know, I have these posts set up uh, marking off a spot and you're supposed to parallel park that car inside those posts. And this one student just kept trying and trying. He'd back up too far and knock standards, standards over. He'd pull up the wrong way and knock them over. And he never could get it out. And finally the, in, the driver training instructor said, you know how to do this? He said, let me show you how. And he got in, and he just run straight through, missed the signs, you see, because they were at the corners, and drove out. I thought, hmm, that's pretty nice. <laughs> it's easy. <laughs> when the instructor does it, see, he's got a way of doing it. And so he took care of that situation, and uh, I think he went ahead and passed the kid, I don't know. <laughs> but, but anyway, <clears throat> I thought that was quite an illustration. He said, let me show you how to do that. And he got behind the wheel and he just drove straight out. <laughs> it's not hard to get out of a parallel parking situation. Good thing there wasn't a car in the front and a car in the back. <laughs> he wouldn't have been able to do that, would he? No. But that's the way with the Lord. And so I enjoy those little time, times of demonstrating how the Lord works. We're going to open our service in prayer and then turn to Galatians, the, the second chapter, for our scripture. <clears throat> Let's pray. Lord, we come with thankful hearts once again, thanking you, Lord, for having brought us all together here in this place, that we truly might worship you. Lord, we just praise you for being our God and Father and loving us so day in and day out, taking care of all the things that we need in this life. Lord, help us in our time of worship together that we truly may glorify you. Lord, we thank you for the answers to prayers that we have heard. We realize, Lord, that prayer is important. And as we come together that we can pray and, come and just talk to you about all of the things that we have went through this past week. And to plan for the week ahead that we may say or do something that would cause others to see Christ in us. Now, Lord, we pray for this box of names and every prayer request that's in this box. We pray for all of the prayer requests that have been made mentioned here in this church, even on Wednesday, even on the special prayer time. Lord, we know that you know our each and every need. 
We know that you know each and everything uh, that the church needs, that it might continue to grow. And Lord, we just simply pray that you will open hearts and doors and people will come here to worship with us. Lord, call forth those that you are seeking to save. Even put them in before our lives on a daily basis that we might witness to them that you might save them. Lord, now we pray for this message this morning. Pray that in some way it might instill itself into our lives that as we go forth, you receive the glory. Now it's in Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Galatians, the second chapter, beginning with verse 15, reading through the 21st verse. <clears throat> you and I are Jews by birth, not sinners like the Gentiles. Yet we know that a person is made right with God by faith in Jesus Christ, not by obeying the law. And we have believed in Christ Jesus so that we might be made right with God because of our faith in Christ, not because we have obeyed the law. For no one will ever be made right with God by obeying the law. Verse 17. But suppose. I like that word. But suppose. We seek to be made right with God through faith in Christ, and then we are found guilty because we have abandoned the law. Would that mean Christ has led us into sin? Absolutely not. Rather, I am a sinner if I rebuild the old system of law I already tore down. For when I tried to keep the law, it condemned me. So I died to the law. I stopped trying to meet all its requirements so that I might live for God. Verse 20. My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not treat the grace of God as meaningless, for if keeping the law could make us right with God, then there was no need for Christ to die. I like that question right there at the end that we just read. There was no need for Christ to die. 